Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today's video is going to be a really heavy duty bag. It's, I'm going to be making it out of upholstery fabric. You can use regular fabric as well with it. Just put some stabilizer in there. This is a bag pattern that I used to make many, many years ago when I first got a whole heap of upholstery fabric and I was making the supermarket shopping bags this is the version that I actually made. It was a very, very robust bag and it sold quite well for me considering the high price tag I had on it. Hang around and I'm going to show you how to make this heavy duty bag. Here are the fabrics that we need. This is going to be the bag base. It's 13 inches by 19 inches wide. These are my handle fabrics. They are 40 inches by 4 inches. I have a lining piece that's 34 inches by 19 inches and an outer piece 36 inches by 19 inches. So I'm going to put up on the screen the measurements now and I'm using upholstery fabric so my fabric is quite sturdy and doesn't need to have any stabilizer on it but if you're using a regular cotton or a duck or something that needs to be stabilized cut some batting or whatever you want to use the same size as your main bag and the other option for yourself is to put some pockets in there you've I've done a couple of videos recently with recessed pockets or credit card pockets I've got separate videos for those which you can go and check and then and they will show you how to put pockets on the inside of the bag but I'm going to do this without pockets today because I'm a little bit slack so what we want to do first is take our handle fabric fold it in half and then fold the raw edges into the center and then fold that together again and we can take that to the machine and stitch down both long edges we don't need to close up the raw edges on these because this is going to be hidden away in the base of the bag later for the base of the bag we've got our 13 by 19 inch piece we're going to turn the long edge under half an inch and then just go and stitch that. We'll go and do that now. So I've got the bag base and I'm just going to do that one first then I'll do the handles. You don't have to worry about back stitching at the beginning or the end this is really just to secure that hem down. And then we can take our handles and do both long edges. Just a quick little tip to make life easier for you in a future step fold the top edge of both ends of your bag over just by an inch and then press it it'll help you later on when we do the inside of the bag now that our handles and our bag base are finished we set that aside take your main bag fabric and fold that in half and we're just going to mark the center and we'll mark that with a pin open that out take your bag base and find the center of that as well the uh, from the shorter side once you've marked the center this base is going to go right across the bottom of our bag and you'll just line that up like that we'll have our handles on the side and this just gives some added strength to our bag and makes it look a little bit nicer too we're going to put our handles on now and we can set that aside for a minute from the outside edge here we're going to come in five inches so just make a couple of marks here same on the other side and while you're at it you can do that at the other end as well and then we're going to measure 12 and a half inches from the top edge down So there's my line at 12 and a half inches and that's going to be where my handle starts so if we take one of the handles place that on that five inch line there and position the handle at the bottom there and then grab the other side make sure your handles nice and even you can place it five inches in and 12 and a half inches from the bottom and go back to the other end and we'll repeat the same process because we're using such thick handles it's actually a lot easier 
to go and use double sided tape. So I'm just going to run a strip of tape inside that 5 inches and then place my handle down. So that's going to sit there nicely whilst I go and sew it. It helps reduce that lumpiness that you get when you put pins in. Now we don't want to stitch all the way to the end. We're going to have a fold on our bag so the lining will sit an inch further down. Make a mark two and a half inches from the top edge. And when I sew the bag handle down, I'm going to come up along the side, go across here and come straight back down again. We don't need to stitch any further along than that. These handles will be secured later when we actually do the fold over hem. Repeat for the other side, so just two and a half inches. Now I've gone and removed the pins and just put some double sided tape down for both sides. Take your bag base and place this directly over the top. So we've marked our centers earlier. Line that up at each end and then you can just pin that in place. You want to make sure that there's enough of the handle peeking underneath. So if we fold this back, we can see that the handle is going to be almost an inch further into the edge of the fabric. So that's plenty. The handle's going to be secured down beautifully and nobody will ever see the raw edges. This just provides a nice decorative feature to the base of the bag, as well as providing a little bit of extra stability. We can now take this to the machine, stitch down both long edges of this, and then stitch the handles up to the chalk mark here to go up, across and down and then everything is secured. If you wanted to you could actually put a little pocket inside here as well in between the handles. I did show you a video a while back for a travel bag that has a pocket inside. If you wanted to do something like that you can go head back over to that video and just see how that's done. So there's lots of options for these types of bags. The first thing I'm going to do is secure the base of the bag. When you go over the handle, because there's so much bulk, I like to go back and then forward again. And while I'm on this side of the bag, I might as well do the handles. Normally when I'm sewing over my handles at the top section, I'll triple stitch that. You don't need to here because we're going to be folding this over later. It's going to be secured up here as well. So you can just stitch straight across. And then we can do the other side. Okay, we've secured the base and the handles to the bag and we can take this now and fold it right side together. Match up the side seams here where the uh, base is. I've secured the side seams and I've just also made sure that the base of the bag with the contrast fabric lines up along here so that when you're looking at the bag on the outside, the stripe will match up nicely. So it's more important to line this section up and the rest of it, you can always manipulate that or trim it if you have to. So we can take this to the machine, stitch straight down the side edges there. Now, I'm, because I'm using upholstery fabric here, I'm actually going to stitch this twice. The fabric's quite heavy and I just like to make sure that my seams are never going to come undone. With upholstery fabric, if I'm making a bag as heavy duty as this one, I'll often go and stitch the lines twice. Remember to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And when you come to the section where the base of the bag intersects or meets, make sure that that's still lined up. And I'll reinforce that. Even though I'm double stitching, I'll still reinforce that. And one more time for good measure. Alright, the side edges are done now and we can box our corners. 
Boxing the corners is really just personal choice. You make them whatever size you like. I'm going to make mine two inches and that means that I'm going to have a base of four inches across and it will also bring my side edges out to four inches. Whatever you do in your boxing, it will always be doubled. So I've marked a two inch square to the side of the stitching line and I'll repeat that for the other side. I generally don't mark these. I usually take it straight to the machine and fold the corners and stitch it out. And we'll do the same on the other side. So when what you can do now is pinch your fabric together and we've got quite a bit of bulk here. So uh, just go slow on your machine. I used to make these bags on my domestic sewing machine. So you can actually do them on there. You just got to go slower, that's all. So matching up the corner there. I'll take this to the machine and I'll stitch straight across here. I always double stitch or triple stitch across the bulk of the seam. Again, given that this is thick upholstery fabric, I'm going to stitch this whole section twice. Just make sure there's no lumps or ripples in that uh, outer fabric on the base. So there's my triangles ready to be stitched. And I'm going to make my seams go in the same direction. So when I go and stitch across here, I'm going to make sure my seam goes to my left. And the same for this one. And I'm just putting a clip in there to remind myself which way I want that to go. Now, rather than going straight back to the machine, I'm going to grab my lining. So take your lining piece. And if you've decided you want to put pockets or anything on the inside of the bag, you'll need to do all of that before you do this next step. So line up the side seams and we'll take it to the machine and stitch all the way down the sides. And when you've done that, you'll do the boxing of the corners exactly the same as you've boxed these. So I'll quickly run down the side of the lining. I don't need to double stitch this one, it's only a cotton fabric. And once the lining is done, I'll go and mark the squares now for the corners and I'll do the box corner at the same time as I do the other one. When bringing the corners out on my lining piece, I've folded the lining in the same direction as I have on my main bag as well. So in this case, I've sent it over to my left and I've just put a little reminder clip at the top there. Uh, and this will actually help my lining and the base of my and the main body of my bag lock into place when I put them together later. And because this one's so thick, I'm going to double stitch. And just feel for any lumps as well, just in case it's rippled up on the inside. You don't want to have any lumps in there. Once you've done your corners, you can just trim off those triangles there. And we're now ready to put the lining into the main part of the bag. So we have our bag inside out. It's nice and big, isn't it? Lots of space. Put your lining inside out. We're going to be closing this bag up at the top of the bag today rather than having uh, seams open at the bottom. So place your lining inside the bag. Uh, we have really, we have lots of thunder and lightning here today and two scared dogs. <laughs> The seam here is coming toward me, so I want to make sure that seam on my bag is in the same direction. And I'll just pop a, a clip there to remind me. And my lining fabric wants to have the seam going away from me. So I've got this one coming to my right, that one going to my left, and they will just click into place, which lines them up perfectly, and come around and do the same for the other side. And this is the reason why we actually have all of our seams going in the same direction when we're doing the boxing of our bag. We do that on the lining and on the main, and it turns out that when you put them together, one go, they go in opposite directions from each other. Now we can centre our lining right across the bag, and we'll leave an opening for turning through as well. 
Now you'll notice I'm not putting any uh, magnetic clasps or zips or anything like that in this bag. Um, this is really just a throw over the shoulder type of bag and if you want to put any clasps or anything do that before you drop the lining in and you can go and put a couple of magnetic clasps on the inside of the bag here on the main bag because we've got that one inch fold over but I'm not going to do that at all I'm just keeping this very very simple okay I've got everything clipped together I've left an opening on one side of the bag which will be used for turning everything the right way around later make sure your handles are well out of the way and inside the bag we'll take this to the machine now we're going to start at one side of the opening back stitch all the way around come back to the other end and back stitch there and then we can turn the bag the right way around Okay, find your opening and we can turn everything the right way around. Remember when I said to you to match up your edges here? I haven't matched mine up very well at all. I, I probably should have started at the bottom and come up so that I wouldn't have any movement in the layers of the fabric as I was stitching. So I should have been more careful there, but it's barely going to be noticed by anybody. Pop your lining inside. Now I'm going to top stitch my lining and what will happen is when you're top stitching your lining down you're going to do that with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. When we fold our, the edges of our bag op over later we're going to have a small section of our lining sitting underneath before it drops down but it's only going to be about 1 8 of an inch of the overall size of the lining of the bag it's going to help it by not having as much bulk at the very bottom edge so a lot of times there's too much uh, fabric on the inside and that'll just help remove some of that but it also gives you a nice finished edge along the bottom here you don't have to do that but I'm doing that so that I can close up my fabric here and also just make it look neater and then I'll be doing two rows of stitching for the top section of the band as well the first thing I'm going to do is close up the opening there and then I can just stitch all the way around. One of the added benefits of top stitching this before you fold it down is that when you close your opening, if it doesn't look perfect, it's going to be hidden away. Take your lining fabric and just separate that from the main part of your bag just a small section of it and we're going to fold this edge over so if you pressed it earlier all you need to do is just fold that over one inch and clip it in place it's very very easy to do that when you know you've got that crease line there if you haven't then just go and measure one inch along the top edge here make sure your lining is out of the way because we're going to be stitching this and we're going to do a top, row of top stitching at the top and we're also going to do a row of top stitching at the bottom here you don't have to it's more than enough just to do a row of stitching around this edge here but it's decorative it looks nicer when you've got the top edge finished as well as the bottom section when you do that your handles here that hopefully you didn't stitch down earlier bring those up to the edge clip it in place and when we do that row of top stitching at the top it's going to secure the handle at the top edge and it's also going to secure the handle on the bottom edge here so the handle is going to be very well secured by the time you finish your two rows across the band so continue folding your fabric over one inch with your lining out of the way and then we'll do those two rows of top stitching okay the handles are all secured in place the edge is folded over I'm going to now go and do just those two rows of stitching and the bag is completely finished and as with all of my bags when I'm doing the top edge of the handle I'm going to go forward and then back and then I'll go forward again
Well, doesn't that have a lot of space inside it? It's very, very roomy and very sturdy. I mean, this, this bag is standing up by itself without any stabiliser in it whatsoever. It's completely reversible as well, so you can wear this bag any way you like. There we go, the right side of the bag. I do like that stripy contrast at the bottom. Uh, it's just, it's a very, very sturdy bag and exactly the same bag turned the other way around. So completely reversible, it just doesn't have the uh, contrast fabric showing at the bottom there, but you could easily go and add that to the lining as well if you wanted to. So a very, very robust bag. Uh, I haven't put any labels on this, I completely forgot to do that. Now, when I used to sell these in the shop about five years ago, I sold them completely unlined. All it was was just the outside of the bag with a fabric at the bottom there for stability. I sold these bags for $45 each. They actually sold quite well considering the hefty price tag, or at least I thought it was a hefty price tag back then. Uh, I'm going to, I've only made two of these. I'm going to see how they go. They're not time consuming to make, but the cutting out of the fabric and all the pieces that you need, they do take a fair bit of time. So I'm going to put these two bags in the shop. I'll put a label on them, but I'll put, a, I'll put them in the shop for probably $55 or $65. I'm not sure yet. I'll have a think about that. Um, actually, I think I might do 65. As I say all the time, you can always go down in price, but you can't go up. So once I put a good label on this, I will price them at $65 in the shop and see if, see if they'll still sell. I reckon they will. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.